Hey guys, this is a quick video on how I made this sketch that has a lot of detail in the rendering. Um, I usually don't go this hard on a sketch render, but I really, really, really wanted to experiment and kind of play around with some things because I'm starting to get to the point where I'm hitting a wall once again with my art. Now, I keep pushing through because I go back to basics, but now I want to challenge myself really push what I've been doing and try to add more detail, you know, figure things out. I've definitely, especially with my recent artwork of Bay, um, kind of figured out, like, I'm really figuring out my rendering style now to the point where it's starting to feel like everything is making sense. So for this particular artwork, I really, really went in depth with the sketch and the rendering and really wanted to plan out an attack before I really get that rendering done. So as you can see here, I do my typical drawing the base and I haven't done that in a while. I make a few errors, um, especially with the shoulders meeting the armpit because I did, I broke a rule. You're supposed to let the, the breast create the line for the shoulder blade and not the arm itself. So I actually got to go back in and fix that later. But, um, I also have kind of a weird way how I draw the pelvis, um, as you can see. But I'm, I'm slowly getting to the point where I just, everything is clicking for me. And I just kind of want to take it to the next level, start drawing more backgrounds, really make it as good as I think it could possibly be. It's funny, I always draw the head a little too big or too small. There's no in-between. It's always slightly incorrect. I have to resize it later. It's why I keep it on a totally separate layer. Um, I think I did really good with the legs this time. They they feel better. Um, especially the thighs and the, the uh, kneecap. I'm actually planning on, when I get to the full render, doing a really detailed render of the... Um, of the uh, kneecap because I'm like, you know, I've been lazy about it for too long. It's time to really push myself. So that's the point of this artwork to push myself, to get better, to really start making my artwork get noticed. And the funny thing is I'm actually perfectly okay with where I am now as a, as a YouTuber. Uh, well, I, if you can call me that, um, let's just say as a video maker, um, I'm starting to feel like I'm getting in the rhythm. I'm getting more comfortable behind the microphone. And now, here pretty soon, I want to start playing with things. I want to come up with new content ideas, do some more tutorials. By the way, I promised the eye tutorials on the way. I just haven't had a lot of time to work on it. I've been doing a lot of like uh, artworks for other people, so it's made it hard. Um, I also want to get a lot better at rendering clothes. I feel my clothes, even though the, the flow and drapery looks right, the rendering doesn't. My rendering when it comes to clothes is very bad in my personal opinion. Now, some people have told me otherwise, but I, I've seen what professionals do and my, my clothes rendering is just not professional yet. And it's time to take that extra step to kind of push me to where I feel like I could become the artist I want to be. I think if young middle school Steven saw what he was making now, he would be very, very proud and probably not understand why the older version of himself wants to keep pushing to get better. Um, if you'll also notice that this is a more risque artwork, mainly because I really, really enjoy rendering skin. Um, but... Another thing, actually, a tip that might help you. So whenever you are drawing something, a lot of people claim that NSFW artists get more views and likes. The reality is there's a balance. Um, you will get more likes being risque than you will being NSFW. Teasing is more powerful than revealing all because after you've revealed everything, there's nothing left to the imagination. So it actually pulls people in more if you give them just enough, but not everything, if that makes sense. You can see all the, the detail I put into the anatomy on this one. I had a good reference, but um, I changed a whole lot from the reference I had to the point where I kind of had to make stuff up as I went along. 
So that was definitely odd. Sorry if you're hearing uh, noises while I um while I talk. I I had a particularly nasty, gross, greasy lawn lunch in my bed. But um yeah, I'm also drawing more Bay, which is this character from Hollow Live. I really like him. If you hear the jingling sound, that is my dog. So I have uh two versions of this artwork. I have one with the background being white and one with a background that I kind of decided to draw later. So now we're going to go to where I start planning the rendering for this. Um, I wanted the light to appear above and a little bit to the right, if that makes sense. I'm using light carving, and if you're a long time viewer of this channel, you'll know what light carving is. It's where we add a multiply, a multiply layer and use the eraser to carve out some light. You'll also notice that on the thigh, I added a bit of a jaggedness and a very harsh shadow, whereas it blends at the bottom. At the top, there's a hard shadow because the skirt is closer to the thigh, so it creates a very jagged edge. So yeah, oh, I'm, I'm so happy with this one so far. I can't wait to finish it. I can't wait to show you the rendering. I plan on uh, explaining my process through rendering piece by piece. I'm going to have a whole video made on this artwork explaining rendering and lighting and try to break it down for you all piece by piece. I really hope you all will enjoy that and like it a whole lot. Um, you'll notice I added some like light behind her and in the skirt to make it kind of pop more. Um, I really do recommend that. Here's some tonal curve to kind of make it look more finished. We're getting to the part where I start... Um, doing little edits, some color balance, some add glow. I added some uh, blue back to the thighs just because it's more natural to do lighting like that. Yeah, there, there's a lot of edits here, but I'm, I'm particularly proud of it because I put so much work into it. Really pushing the artwork as far as I can. Now, my post-processing is a bit messy. Um... It doesn't make complete sense, and there are probably some stages I could have taken away, but I usually play around with opacity and just add little bits at a time each time to kind of make it stand out. And I think for the most part, I did a pretty good job. I then adjusted the character to fit the composition a bit more, added a copy of it on top, it did add glow, uh, hard light, I mean, and blurred it a bit. I also kind of highlighted the, the uh, top... That way I could um, change the multiply layer to a bit more blue to make it make more sense. So we're getting pretty close to where I start drawing the background. So I really hope uh, y'all take notice of this. Um, the one thing I'm doing, and you'll notice this as I add the multiply layer on top again to add a hard shadow, is I'm going for kind of a... Uh, underneath an awning where the light is just hitting the character. And I think that makes the character pop and stand out more. Now, when it comes to the background, I don't draw lines. I usually just do uh, solid colors because it makes it look a little more anime-like. So you'll see that here. And I'm kind of planning out this wooden doorway. So yeah, I'm super, super happy with this. It feels like it just kind of goes... Bam! In your face. It's like so saturated. I love saturated colors. I'm, I'm a weirdo who loves them a whole lot. So yeah, now we've got this uh, idea. I put like a concrete texture on it and erase parts of it to make it kind of subtle. And we're going to add an add glow layer on top to make the sun look like it's hitting it just right. We do some level correction to make sure it's not too dark and not so much contrast. And there we go. Now we've almost got our background. Now, um, we're approaching the final stages of the sketch where I start adding little things later. Um, and it, well, there's a bit of a time jump. I forgot to record myself uh, drawing the fingers, but I did end up doing that. Just played around with some ideas to kind of make the character pop a bit more. We're approaching the end, so... Yeah, I think this was the point I started, like, looking up references to kind of help myself out a bit. I then drew, like, these, uh, cleansing tags. I don't know what exactly they're called, but, like, 
Uh, they they probably don't look anything like this in real life. The point is they need to look somewhat like how they do because I'm just going to blur it later to kind of make it look like it's in the uh, the foreground. There we go. I was going to draw a plant there, but then I thought it was just too much. So we're getting toward the end now. This is where I make the multiply layer where the character meets the light a little bit more intense just because I felt like it wasn't quite dark enough. I played around with some brightness ideas in the hair, but I ended up not liking it, so I got rid of it. Then I found on top I might actually be able to do it, and it turns out I was, so yay! And there we go. We're pretty much done now. So if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.